Welcome everyone to the recorded webinar series on LED-based photoacoustic imaging. My name is Mithun and I'm a research and business development manager at Cyberdyne. In this series, several key opinion leaders in the field of photoacoustics will talk about LED-based photoacoustic imaging and its preclinical and clinical applications. Today's very interesting talk will be about photoacoustic imaging capabilities of light emitting diodes and will be delivered by Dr. Raj Kothapalli, who is an assistant professor at the Pennsylvania State University. His research focuses on developing multimodal imaging systems for preclinical and clinical applications. Prior to joining Penn State, Dr. Kothapalli was a postdoctoral fellow and an instructor in the Department of Radiology at Stanford University. He holds a PhD in Biomedical Engineering from Washington University in St. Louis and has published more than 40 articles in peer-reviewed journals. He is a recipient of the prestigious NIH Pathway to Independence Award. In this talk, Dr. Kothapalli will discuss his lab's efforts in developing novel LED-based photoacoustic systems and their capabilities for combined structural, functional, and molecular imaging in living subjects. With that, I will turn it over to Dr. Kothapalli. Thank you, Mithun, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. This is Raj Kothapalli. Greetings from Penn State. While optical and ultrasound imaging systems have been made portable and widely used in the remote parts of the world, photoacoustic systems still have to reach that level of portability. One main constraint is that uh, the light excitation that we use in photoacoustic imaging is based on uh, bulky nanosecond lasers. So the cost of these lasers range anywhere between $25,000 to $200,000, depending on the targeted applications. Moreover, these laser source, uh, sources are classified as class four uh, and comes with a, a risk of potential harm to the users, uh, especially the eyes are more vulnerable to the laser exposure unless we wear uh, protective goggles. To address these problems of portability, safety, and high cost in recent years, light emitting diodes, commonly known as LED arrays, uh, have been explored for photoacoustic imaging. Thanks to the great efforts of Cyberdyne, we now have a commercial LED-based photoacoustic system called Acoustic X. Uh, today, um, I will. Uh, this is the outline of my talk. First, I'll give a brief introduction to photoacoustic imaging. Then, I will present our work that compares the performance of LED arrays and lasers for photoacoustic imaging. Then I will discuss a novel LED-based photoacoustic tomography system that we developed in our lab. Um, if you are new to the photoacoustic imaging, here is the working principle. Most commonly, a short pulse laser light irradiates the subject of interest. Biological tissue uh, scatters these light photons when diffused uh, photon waves strike the light absorbing molecules such as hemoglobin uh, in the blood vasculature. These molecules then undergo transient thermoelastic expansion, which subsequently leads to a broadband photoacoustic waves. And these waves propagate outside the body and get detected by a bunch of transducer elements. And uh, we can then form photoacoustic images using beam forming uh, algorithms. Recently, photoacoustic systems uh, have been translated from bench to bedside clinical applications, as you are seeing in this slide. Uh, here is one example from my own work. So this is a transrectal ultrasound combined photoacoustic imaging system we developed for imaging human prostate. The, uh, the system is placed uh, bedside next to the, in the urology clinic. Um, the system is packaged uh, into two movable cots to facilitate easy moving of the system in and out of the urology clinic. One card is for the laser and other for the ultrasound data acquisition and other electronics. We image several patients and this work is recently published in the Science Translational Medicine Journal. 
um, while such photoacoustic systems on a wheel suits some deep tissue clinical applications such as this prostate imaging or for human breast imaging for mesoscopic uh, imaging depths or applications and also to achieve wider outreach we need a highly portable for the acoustic system. So that's where we are uh, using LED arrays uh, to bring overall uh, system uh, portability to a greater level. Um, here is the uh, picture of a high density LED arrays developed and commercialized by Friction, a company in Japan. Um, they commercialized this arrays in uh, system in 2016, if I'm correct. And now these products are sold by Cyberdyne. Um, so they leverage several advances in LED fabrication, pulse driving electronics to generate high power nanosecond pulsed LED arrays. If you want to further understand this LED hardware and the integrated electronics, you can check their uh, recent presentation and paper published in SPIE Foronics 2020. In brief, uh, these LED arrays uh, are available in different wavelengths, uh, right from visible to near IR uh, wavelengths. And also they have a dual wavelength 690 and 850 uh, nanometer LED array, where one row is for 690. There are like four rows here, as you can see, uh, one row is dedicated for 690 nanometer emission, another row for 850, like such interleaved, uh, elements for six of 690 nanometer and 850 nanometer are available um, that can emit two different wavelengths. So the typical energy for each LED array is about 200 microjoules per pulse. And the pulse width uh, of these arrays uh, change between uh, range between 30 nanoseconds to 150 nanoseconds. And uh, the, these LED arrays fire uh, at rate of four kilohertz uh, pulse repetition frequency. In comparison, um, our standard uh, solid state lasers and OPO lasers, uh, the typical pulse energy is up to 140 millijoules uh, in the near infrared region. And uh, the wavelength is tunable from 690 to 950 nanometers and also from 1200 nanometers to 2600 nanometers. And they have a pulse repetition frequency of 10 Hertz. Um, and, and the pulse width is about five nanoseconds. So in the first part of my talk, I will present our studies comparing the Fourier acoustic imaging uh, performance of portable LED arrays and the laser. To draw a fair comparison, we took several precautions here. Uh, first, both uh, LED based and laser based Fourier acoustic imaging systems were made to share the same ultrasound detector and also the same acoustic X data acquisition system. This, this ensures that received for acoustic signal is treated the same way in both the cases, such as amplification, signal processing and image reconstruction, everything uh, uh, is made same. So uh, this is how a typical LED based uh, acoustic X system from Cyberdyne looks like, where the two LED arrays are sent uh, uh, are on, placed on either side of the ultrasound transducer, all control electronics and uh, for pulsing the ultrasound and LED arrays and subsequent ultrasound data acquisition is everything is housed inside this box. And this PC uh, reconstructs the BMOR ultrasound and photoacoustic images in real time. And they have uh, this PC uh, uh, and, and those images are displayed on this PC. Um, this is how the light illumination from these two LED arrays looks like on the tissue surface, right? Um, so in order to draw a fair comparison, uh, the first thing we need to do is that we need to uh, bring our laser illumination to the same level. So like what is shown here. So in order to achieve such a um, illumination on the tissue surface from the laser, we developed a custom fiber bundle, which uh, on the output end, as you can see here, it is terminated into two fiber optic arrays. And uh, we actually also placed a, a ground glass or a diffuser glass here so that the light is uh, informally scattered 
and, and it uh, provides such a uh, illumination on the tissue surface similar to the LED uh, based illumination. So the INJ shows the LED based uh, setup and uh, laser based uh, uh, setup for imaging the human hands. So uh, we first tested the LED and laser based systems on a tissue mimicking interlipid phantom with a homogeneous background, but having a strong uh, reduced optical scattering coefficient of up to or 20 centimeter inverse. As you can see, we placed one pencil lead uh, each at a depth of 15 millimeters. That's our first target. The second pencil lead target is placed at 23 millimeters. The third one is placed at 28 millimeters. And the fourth one is uh, placed at uh, uh, 34 millimeters. So this is the uh, photoacoustic image uh, generated by the laser at 850 nanometers and with 40 millijoules per pulse energy, but on the tissue surface, it's about uh, less than 120, uh, sorry, uh, 20 millijoules per centimeter square. And uh, this is at a uh, uh, rate of 10 Hertz uh, frame rate for, for acoustic imaging. And you can see that all four targets can be seen in this laser generated for acoustic image, which is generated at 70 dB uh, scale here. And the images from C, D, E, F, G, H are all LED based for acoustic images um, uh, with the uh, dual wavelength, uh, sorry, uh, with uh, at 850 nanometer uh, wavelength and uh, with the 400 microjoule pulse. But what is changing between these uh, images is the frame rate. So here the C is at 30 Hertz frame rate and D is at 15 Hertz all the way to 1.5 Hertz. In other words, the we uh, increase the average from about 128 averages to generate this 30 Hertz image to about 2,500 averages to uh, generate this photoacoustic image uh, at 1.5 Hertz because this uh, LEDs are firing with the uh, four kilohertz rate. And as you can see that with LED based images, um, as we average more, although the frame rate is decreasing, the image quality is improving. So, from these uh, images, we further plotted SNR as a function of frame rate for all uh, these four targets. And in the plot I um, for the shallow depth target, uh, which is the first target at 15 millimeters, the signal to noise ratio for LEDs is much above uh, the laser. You can see that this is much above the laser, uh, even with the low averaging, that means um, high frame rate of LEDs, right? So when you average less, you have a high frame rate and all these, even these points are above, much above the, um, the laser uh, data, laser generated for acoustic data. Now, if you look at the plot L, which is for target four, that means this target, right? Uh, in this image, uh, the laser based image, as well as the other uh, uh, LED based images, and uh, if you look at this plot L for the deeper target at 34 millimeters, LED SNR at 10 Hertz um, is slightly lower. Like, you know, look at this, this LED SNR is only slightly lower than the laser SNR uh, at 10 Hertz, but at a little bit more averaging, uh, there is, its SNR is uh, better than the uh, light SNR. So uh, this actually demonstrates that you know, uh, if you do a better averaging LED performs as good as uh, lasers, um, even up to 34 uh, millimeters depth. So this, this is possible because LEDs are firing at um, a four kilohertz uh, rep rate and, and you can leverage that to achieve a good uh, uh, image quality. We, uh, further quantified the signals and noise around these targets for both LED and laser-based PA images shown here. Um, here for 15 millimeter target, you can see that laser generated uh, PA signal 
is about two order log orders higher than the uh, uh, two orders higher than the LED generated PS signal. But we see that the noise is also higher, uh, at least three orders higher uh, in the laser case compared to the LED case for the 15 millimeter targets. If you look at the 34 millimeter target, again, the laser generated uh, for the acoustic signal is three orders of uh, three orders more than the LED based uh, uh, for the acoustic signal for the same frame rate, which is 10 Hertz. And the noise for that, uh, the, the, the 34 millimeter target is also three orders more in the laser case compared to the LED uh, based uh, signal. So um, if you calculate the signal to noise ratio for these targets, we see that LED has a, a higher SNR for shallow targets such as target one uh, at 50, uh, 15 millimeter depth has an 83 millimeter, uh, uh, 83 dB uh, 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 strength of the signal compared to the, uh, the laser which shows a 68 dB SNR. And if you compare that with that for the target four, uh, the LED has 44 dB SNR and the laser is slightly above at 48 dB SNR. So again, uh, this concludes that uh, the uh, LED uh, based for acoustic imaging closely matches the performance of uh, um, high power uh, lasers. Um, so this is very, uh, uh, a very important observation that we made uh, from this uh, study. So in the next step, we compared the performance of the systems for imaging uh, uh, chicken inside the chicken tissue phantoms. So again, we placed four different pencilets at different depths and repeated this imaging tests and SNR analysis using LED and laser based for acoustic systems. Uh, in the ultrasound image, you can see all the four targets nicely. This is a laser based photo acoustic image. And then this is the LED based, these are the LED based photo acoustic images at uh, acquired at different frame rate. That means with uh, different averaging conditions. Um, uh, in consistence with our previous observation, you can see that laser based uh, photo acoustic uh, uh, signal. Uh, the SNR is at 10 Hertz is slightly above the uh, LED based uh, uh, SNR uh, at 10 Hertz. But as, a, as we mentioned before, if you do more averaging LED uh, actually performs better than the uh, laser based uh, uh, setup. So, uh, we, in the next step, we compared the performance of the system, systems for imaging human vasculature. Here is the LED based uh, uh, PA setup and this is the laser based uh, uh, B mode setups. So here the, these uh, imaging heads are placed parallel to the direction of radial arteries on the hand. So if you compare the uh, PA, so, and these are the two ultrasound images here in these two cases, this is a uh, as I said, this is a laser-based setup and this is a LED-based setup. So the ultrasound image uh, is pretty uh, similar in both the cases. And uh, if we compare the for the acoustic images, we agree that these images look uh, very uh, similar. And despite the fact that L the, the two LED arrays uh, emit much lower energy, like 400 microjoules uh, per pulse from these two LED arrays, compared to the laser here, which is actually at 20 millijoules per centimeter square on the tissue surface. So consistent with our previous observations on tissue mimicking phantoms. So the SNR of the LED from such uh, superficial vascular targets is slightly uh, above, um, like for example, 40 dB, 42 dB compared to the 36 dB that you see in the laser case. So we then perform 3D imaging using these two setups again. So this is a laser-based uh, 
uh, for acoustic setup and this is LED based uh, for acoustic setup. Um, uh, the imaging head is linearly translated uh, perpendicular to the radial arteries like in the y direction shown here. So these are the reconstructed maximum uh, intensity projection images for both uh, laser based uh, and sorry both the LED based and laser based illumination. Here the color bar represents the depth with red color representing the signals coming from deeper depths and blue color coming from superficial depths. From these results, we see that uh, there is no major difference between the LED based and laser based systems for up to one to 1.5 centimeter depth of imaging. And laser illumination, however, shows some deeper vessels beyond 1.5 centimeters uh, with more clarity than the LED based uh, illumination. So in conclusion to the first part of my talk, um, so these studies demonstrate that laser-based portable uh, and low-cost for acoustic imaging is very attractive for certain mesoscopic uh, clinical applications and preclinical applications, such as imaging skin cancer and wide range of vascular diseases, uh, such as peripheral arterial disease and stroke. So this is the manuscript in preparation um, that we would like to submit pretty soon. Um, and uh, coming to the second part of my talk, um, here uh, I will show our recent work on developing a, a novel LED-based photoacoustic computer tomography system uh, that we uh, abbreviated as LED PACT. As we discussed before, a uh, conventional acoustic X imaging head from Cyberdyne consists of two LED arrays on either side of an ultrasound probe to illuminate the tissue sample. And a 1D scanning of this imaging head generates a 3D volumetric images, right? Um, although this, this, is, uh, this conventional setup is faster, but is not optimal for deep tissue imaging as I will show you uh, shortly. So we developed a, a volumetric cylindrical imaging geometry that allows integration of several LED arrays and an ultrasound probe uh, to achieve more homogeneous light fluence within the tissue medium, especially in the deeper uh, regions of the tissue. In this first generation system, we incorporated, however, only four LED arrays and one ultrasound probe. That means two more than the convention, two LED, uh, two more LED arrays compared to the conventional uh, acoustic X system um, and um, the, wavelength this, the wavelength of this LED arrays depends on the molecules of interest that we want to map. For example, in this setup, we used a four dual wavelength 680, 690, 850 uh, nanometer LED arrays. So this picture shows, so these are one, two, three, four LED arrays here. Um, uh, each one, each array has both 690 and 850 nanometer output uh, because these are dual wavelength LED arrays. So uh, when you switch off the 850, you can see the light emission, red light emission from the 690 uh, nanometers. And when you switch off the 690 and uh, switch on the 850, you can see such a light illumination. You can also see clearly the transducer. This is a transducer surface um, uh, in both the cases. Um, uh, more importantly here, uh, this, uh, yeah, so you can see that there's an imaging subject placed inside this uh, cylindrical housing, and then this entire cylind cylindrical housing uh, is attached to a rotational stage uh, that is connected to a servometer. This allows a uh, full rotation of 360 degrees around the imaging subject. And uh, at each rotational angle, we acquire a B-mode ultrasound and a multi-wavelength for the acoustic imaging by sequentially firing each of the four LED arrays uh, using, and using this data from this multiple rotation angles or projections, we can reconstruct a volumetric uh, 3D computed uh, for acoustic image using a uh, time reversal uh, image reconstruction algorithms. 
So this is a schematic of the setup described in the previous slide. Here is the imaging subject, which is a phantom and the imaging uh, uh, cylindrical geometry uh, and the, this phantom and the whole uh, imaging of the cylindrical geometry are both immersed uh, inside the water. But in the second generation uh, uh, food acoustic computer tomography system that we are developing now, we will be using an upright configuration uh, to facilitate in vivo mouse imaging with minimal water coupling. So these slides uh, compare the, our simulation results of optical fluence distribution inside the tissue mimicking uh, phantom for the proposed uh, uh, LED-based photoacoustic computer tomography system, as well as the conventional B-mode acoustic system shown in A. So the schematic in A shows a, a conventional acoustic X geometry consisting of two 850, 690 dual wavelength LED arrays. This is one dual wavelength LED array here and another LED array here. And this uh, blue rectangle shows uh, uh, the position of the ultrasound transducer. In the PACT setup, now you can see that uh, four such LED arrays separated by 72 degrees. And then this is the uh, position of the ultrasound array. And C and uh, D actually shows the 3D schematic position of the LED arrays in these two geometries. So here the individual dots uh, represent the position of LED elements for a given wavelength in the dual wavelength LED array. The color maps uh, below actually are the, the generated by our simulations. And this is the 2D cross section of the optical fluence distribution in the conventional B-mode imaging uh, case uh, of acoustic X and our PACT uh, case. And this is a 3D uh, optical fluence uh, simulations from, from this arrays. As you can see in this plot, uh, this is the plot of optical fluence profile along, uh, along this uh, radial uh, diagonal angle and uh, in, inside the cylindrical geometry. And you can see that in comparison to uh, this, the PACT setup, uh, in, in the PACT setup, the optical fluence is uh, more or less constant uh, within the tissue medium. So uh, to demonstrate the advantage of our photo acoustic computer setup, for deep tissue imaging, we build this structural phantom imaging setup. So the schematic in this A shows a side view of the tissue mimicking interlipid phantom embedded with four targets. So the depth of the targets from the top surface are like the first target, which is actually a bundle of five pencil leads. Each pencil lead is about 0.3 mm diameter. So this first target is placed at um, 10 millimeters. The second target is uh, a single pencil lead of 0.3 mm diameter at 14 millimeters depth. Um, and then the target three uh, is uh, at 23 millimeters, which is again a 0.3 mm pencil lead target at 23 millimeters depth and target four, a 0.3 millimeter pencil lead target at 31 millimeter depth inside the phantom. So uh, this is the, the actual picture of the phantom, the top view. You can see this first target, which is a really a thicker target because it's a combination of five pencil leads. And then you see a tiny uh, second target that is slightly below uh, in the depth direction, um, and then three and four. So this is a side view of the phantom. So this is the LED PACT uh, image uh, that we uh, captured uh, when the uh, cylindrical housing is rotated around this uh, phantom uh, phantom, and we acquired multiple projections and from that projection we generated this image and you can clearly see all the four uh, pencil lead targets. So this is the uh, 3D image generated by Acoustic X uh, from the Cyberdyne when you linearly scan the imaging head on the surface of the phantom. Here you see that target two is missing and the target four is missing for two different reasons. The target two is missing because uh, this is at 14 millimeters depth, sorry. 
this is at 14 millimeters depth uh, uh, and the ta and that means only four millimeters apart uh, and it is got shouldered by therefore it is it got shouldered by the the first target which is a uh, thicker uh, about like uh, five times thicker compared to the second target so uh, the fourth target is missing interestingly because the total imaging depth of capture in acoustic x is 40 millimeters so of which 10 to 15 millimeters is dedicated for nicely coupling the imaging head to the tissue so that you have an uniform illumination on the tissue surface therefore 10 to 15 millimeters is actually uh, we call that as a dead region. It is where the ultrasound gel or a water is coupled. So the effective imaging depth inside the tissue therefore is uh, between three centimeters to 25 millimeters. Therefore, this fourth target is missing here in the conventional LED-based acoustic X. So this actually demonstrates the clearly the structural phantom clearly demonstrates the advantage of our LED PACT that it can overcome the uh, shadow problems it actually puts more light in, inside the tissue medium because you have more LED arrays here and the more light and that light is also more uniform and uh, you can also uh, recover the deeper tissue targets compared to the acoustic X. And uh, we also uh, uh, calculated the spatial resolution using these plots and which actually shows that LED based uh, PACT setup as a better spatial resolution, which is about 300 micron lateral and 120 micron actual compared to the laser-based setup, which is about 600 micron lateral and 130 micron uh, actual resolutions. So uh, then we uh, also imaged uh, oxygen saturation uh, phantom so for for example for several diseases it's very important and to uh, map the oxygen saturation that is one of the greatest strengths of photoacoustic imaging that label free uh, oxygen saturation mapping even from deeper tissue with a finer spatial resolution that other techniques cannot do that so for example it's very important for uh, diagnosing arthritis as uh, shown by shooting Wong group from University of Michigan using this LED based uh, acoustic X systems. Um, so we want to do something similar but using our PSCT setup. So, <clears throat> um, so here we uh, uh, developed a finger mimicking phantom and we placed a little bone uh, 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 in between oxygen rich blood vessel and oxygen poor blood vessel and uh, this is our phantom sorry uh, this is our phantom uh, side view and you can see the top view where we place the bone here and this is the uh, oxygen rich tube and oxygen poor blood tube um, this is the typical b mode ultrasound image uh, that actually shows the bone a strong signal from the bone and maybe there is a some line that you can see from the blood tubes and this is a typical photoacoustic image. This is a typical ultrasound and photoacoustic image from one of the angles uh, when you are rotating uh, the cylindrical housing around this uh, uh, phantom. And this is a co registered ultrasound and photoacoustic images. So once we complete the full rotation and uh, do a image reconstruction, this is how the image from a 650 nanometer uh, uh, image looks like and this is uh, how a 690 uh, nanometer for the acoustic image looks like. So that means we actually used a dual wavelength uh, 690, 850 nanometer LED arrays for such LED arrays. So then we uh, subjected this data to a, a spectral unmixing algorithm which can clearly uh, resolve the oxygen saturation of this uh, blood tube and it shows that the the oxygen rich blood tube has a greater oxygen saturation than the other tube. Um, so in the next study, uh, we, we want to demonstrate the multispectral photoacoustic imaging capabilities of this LED arrays um, 
so to resolve any different uh, to to resolve different molecules of interest in the imaging region, we need multivalent photoacoustic imaging. So uh, conventional photoacoustic systems use a tunable OPO laser where wavelength can be tuned from visible region to far infrared regions. Such a wide tunability is not possible, unfortunately, with the LED arrays. Um, so the only way to do this is to integrate as many LED elements or, or arrays of different wavelengths as possible inside the imaging setup. Uh, this is one of the main advantage of our cylindrical geometry for acoustic computed uh, setup, tomography setup. So to demonstrate this, we made a tissue mimicking phantom consisting of three tubes. So uh, the ICG tube, which has uh, a peak absorption around 800 nanometer and a, a methylene blue tube, which has a peak absorption around uh, 690 nanometers or 670 nanometers and a melanin tube whose optical absorption actually decreases as a function of uh, wavelength. So this is a, a schematic of the set of phantom and this is the actual picture of the phantom. And then these are the pictures of uh, our uh, imaging head or cylindrical housing. Uh, so here we used uh, to image these three molecules which has like three different uh, uh, who's, who, which have a uh, peak absorption at three different wavelengths. So we used actually uh, uh, three different uh, wavelengths here. For example, we used two dual mode, dual wavelength LED arrays, like which is 690 and 850 nanometers. So these are the two, those two uh, dual wavelength arrays. And then we used two 470 nanometer LED arrays. So there are like four total four LED arrays here. And then there is an US transducer. So in the first case, uh, in this picture, as you can see, uh, we switched off the 470 nanometer LED array and also switched off the 690 nanometer LED from the dual wavelength. So you can see the light emission from only 850 nanometer. So similarly here, we switched off the 470 and 850 and you can see the light emission only from the 690 nanometer. So in this one, uh, we switched off both 850 and 690. That's why these two uh, LED arrays, there's nothing coming from this. And uh, we switched on only the 470 nanometer LED array. So um, again, uh, we, we then did a tomography imaging and uh, these are the three photoacoustic images captured at these three different wavelengths, 850, 690, and 470 nanometer. You can see that melanin tube, this one has a stronger absorption at 470, therefore the photoacoustic uh, signal is stronger uh, from the melanin tube uh, in the 470 nanometer photoacoustic image. Similarly, the methylene blue absorbs, uh, has a strong absorption at 690 nanometers, so this tube uh, appears stronger in the 690 nanometer photoacoustic image. Um, so then we uh, subjected these uh, images to our spectral unmixing algorithm, which nicely separate all these uh, images. And you can then color code these images to display such uh, 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 spectrally unmixed uh, multi-chromophore uh, or a multi-molecular uh, uh, information. In conclusion, Computer tomography opens several opportunities for further improving the photoacoustic imaging performance of LED arrays. So we are further improving the speed, field of view, SNR, and of our LED uh, PACT imaging setup to make it uh, uh, suitable for real-time volumetric imaging of uh, small animals and also for certain uh, clinical applications such as uh, imaging finger uh, joints and also for human breast. Uh, recently, University of Twente group reported a different uh, type of LED PACT CCT setup that is shown here. Uh, in our uh, cylindrical geometry uh, based uh, LED, LED PACT setup that I discussed before, the transducer and four LED arrays are oriented in such a way they are providing a sagittal view uh, or, a, or a coronal view through the phantom or a living subject here. Uh, but here in the University of Twente uh, group setup, the transducer and four LED 
arrays are oriented in such a way they provide a transverse uh, view through the phantom or, or a living subject. So as you can see here in their case, they can, uh, the ultrasound image clearly displays different uh, uh, anatomical structures in a living mouse, such as spleen, kidney, liver, and all these organs can be nicely identified in the ultrasound image. And for acoustic image shows a vascular contrast uh, from these regions. So these results match commercial small animal for acoustic scanners that usually cost around $750,000. So in near future, these developments that you see here from the LED PACT setups uh, are expected to reduce the overall cost of for acoustic scanners to less than $100,000. Uh, thank you for your attention. If you need further information or if you would like to collaborate with our group, uh, please email me. And I also thank all my funding sources, NIH, NIBAB, uh, and the startup funds from Penn State Cancer Institute and Penn State College of Engineering. And I also, uh, we also thank NVIDIA for donating a GPU that we used in all our deep learning uh, work. And a special thanks to my PhD student, Sumit Agrawal. Um, he'll be uh, entering his fifth year uh, next year. And uh, he's the one who uh, generated most of the data that is shown here, including the LED, LED versus laser uh, experiments and also LED PACT paper. He's the first author. Again, thank you very much uh, to all of you for listening to my talk. And if you have any questions or discussions you want to make, please shoot me an email. And with all that, I, I wish you all stay safe and thank you again. Take care, bye.